Today I want to share how to float a soft edge in if you're using any kind of watercolor medium. This is my first video so please be patient with me. I'm beginning with having stamped my image. This is a little memory box stamp in a pearlescent chocolate brilliant ink. I heat set that image to make sure that I wouldn't have any bleeding. You don't have to heat set brilliance, but on watercolor paper I've noticed sometimes that if I don't I have to wait quite a while in order for it to dry. Now I'm going to use some twinkling H2O's. This is a bashful blue color. I really like it for a sky color. When I'm trying to float a soft background edge that's diffuse around the outside, blending into the paper and darker around the image, I always start by putting plain water around the outside of my image. Now do this in manageable sections because that water dries pretty quickly. Now I've got some twinkling H2O's here that I've already softened up a bit. I'm going to get some of those on the end of my water brush and I'm just going to work into the wet area and it will soften right up the edge. Well, I'm going to go back and pull some of that pigment out. I got a little much there, but I'll be able to fix that still. Okay, now I'm really going to have to work this in order to soften it up. See where it's hitting that wet edge? I'm going to go back, add a little more wetness in that edge because I got quite a bit of pigment down there originally. Pull that part in. I'm going to soften this. It's always easier to soften as you go than it's ever going to be to try to come back and fix a hard edge. And this is a, a pretty basic little technique that you'll find yourself using quite a bit if you happen to like soft edges. And so many people ask how to do it and I've tried to simply explain it verbally and that hasn't seemed to make a lot of sense. Okay, here we go. I'm going to wet the top now and work right in here. If you're using Twinkling H2O's, keep in mind that it's helpful to put a couple of drops of color, uh, excuse me, of water in the little tub before, a few minutes before you're ready to start so that you soften those up and don't have to just keep working and working at them in order to get a soft edge. By the way, when you see my hand going off screen, I'm usually wiping a little bit of water out of my water brush. Sometimes that's because I got just a bit too much pigment. Sometimes it's because my water brush is too wet. Okay, looking pretty good there. I'm going to come in on this side and on the bottom. And I'm doing the very same thing. Actually, if I'd thought about getting it out in time, I could have put a little bit purpler color under here to look like cool shadows, but that's okay. We're just going to keep going with the colors we have, the one color we have out right now, since I'm just trying to introduce something basic to you anyway. I go up here to the back of this bird. I'm going to keep my color strongest right next to my image. Go back, soften that edge. I should hit that little wet patch there and, and just get a nice soft edge. I'm working on some watercolor paper here. Paper makes a huge difference when you're using any kind of water medium. Well, actually, any medium. I mean, if you're using Copic markers, you obviously don't want to use watercolor paper because it's so absorbent that you're not going to get a great look there. You're not going to be able to blend before the paper starts absorbing it. So the moral of that story is you use the right product, the right paper for whatever kind of coloring product you're using. There, I have a pretty decent soft edge all the way around that now. I could put a little bit more color over here in the branches. I normally am using either a soft, somewhat warm blue, I mean as blue goes, or I'm using a pale muted yellow in my backgrounds. There, I think after that dries I should have a nice soft edge there and that is how you watercolor and get a soft edge instead of a hard edge. Hope that was helpful. Thanks. Bye.